Hi, welcome the, uh, to the session of the Higher Abstract Algebra. It's me, Muhammad Nishad, uh, Assistant Professor of Faro College. And today, in my lecture 3, I am discussing the session 1, the last part, direct products and finitely generated abelian group. In the last class, we discussed it is that the structure of the finitely generated abelian groups. So, <coughs> some theorems of the abstract algebra easy to understand and use, although their proofs may be quite technical and time consuming to present. In this session, we explain the meaning and significance of the theorem we omit but omit we omit fair proof. The meaning of any theorem without proof we omit uh, is well within our understanding and we feel uh, we should be acquainted with it. The theorem that we now state gives as to complete structural information about all sufficiently small abelian groups, in particular about all finite abelian groups. We move to our theorem. Our theorem is says that fundamental theorem of the finitely generated abelian groups. In this theorem, it says that a very finitely generated abelian group G is isomorphic to direct products of the cyclic groups of the form Zp1 raised to R1 cross Zp2 raised to R2 cross etc. cross Zpn raised to Rn cross. Uh, z cross z cross etc cross z. If g is finite, we cut here. No need of z cross z cross etc z. If g is infinite, there should be a part of uh, z cross z cross etc z is here. Where all p i s are presented here are the primes, but not necessarily distinct. And the r i s are the positive integers. Uh, the direct product is unique except for possible rearrangement of the factors. This direct product is unique but except for the possible rearrangement of its factors. See, uh, that is the number of factors of Z and uh, is unique and the prime powers P i raised to R i are unique. This is very important that is the number of factors of z is unique and the prime powers p i raised to r i are unique. The number of factors is called bt number of the group g. See, uh, this is what is called fundamental theorem of the finitely generated abelian group. We use this theorem in many part of this session the upcoming theorem in theorems we are using this fundamental theorem of finitely generated abelian group you may not this theorem 11.12 we call always theorem 11.12 that is what is the fundamental theorem of the finitely generated abelian groups okay we can move to an example find all abelian groups here we have uh, one condition is there up to isomorphism of order 360. See, we have to find all abelian groups of order 360 but up to isomorphism. What is the meaning of the up to isomorphism? The phrase up to isomorphism signifies that any abelian groups of order 360 should be structurally identical. That means isomorphic to one of the groups uh, of order 360 exhibited. So, all the structurally identical groups, isomorphic groups count as one. All the structurally identical isomorphic groups, we count it as one. Uh, how, as many of it is as they are possible, but we count it as one. Okay, we can move to uh, its solution. As I said to you earlier, we make use of theorem 11.12. We know the theorem 11.12 is, uh, is nothing. It is the fundamental theorem of the finitely generated abelian groups. Since our groups are to be finite of order 360. Here group G is finite and whose order is 360. That is why I said to you earlier because its order is finite 
we cut the part of the z cross z cross etc cross z. So, no factors of z will appear in the direct product. No factors of z will appear in the direct product. That is the last part of the uh, fundamental theorem of finitely generated abelian groups is cut because it is finite shown in the statement of the theorem. Uh, we know that we shown in our statement of the theorem we all have well very well because it is finite that we do not want this part z cross z cross etc cross z we cut here this part is enough. So, we, we move to again to our example. So, <coughs> uh, <coughs> that is why uh, we can say that first we express 360. We can factorize 360 as a prime factorization, prime power factorization. That is why 360 can be written as 2 cube into 3 square into 5. There are 3 2s in 360, there are 2 uh, 3s in 360, 1 5 in 360. Then by fundamental theorem of finitely generated abelian group, we can write it as like this, two, uh, 3 2s and 2 3s and 1 5 is there. That is why z2 cross z2 cross z2 cross z3 cross z3 cross z5. And that is why we can combine z2 z2 that is means 2 square is there. So, that we can return as uh, z2 cross z4 z4 is z2 square cross z3 cross z3 cross z5. Similarly, we can return as 3 uh, 2 that is z2 cross z2 cross z2 and 3 square that means z3 square that means z9 cross z5. Similarly, we can write this as z2 cross z2 square that means z4 cross z3 square that means z9 cross z5. So, we can write it as z2 cross z4 cross z9 cross z5. Similarly, we have 3 2s are there uh, that means 2 cube 2 cube is 8 that means z8 z8 cross and 2 3 z3 cross z3 cross z5. Also, we can return as 3 2s that means 2 cube z8, 3 square z9 and 1 5 is z5 and in plus we can return as z8 cross z9 cross z5. So, these uh, are the different structures, all other structures are isomorphic to any of these 6. That is why up to isomorphism there are only 6 different abelian groups of order 360. That is very important. All other groups are existing, abelian groups are existing of order 360 is any of these 6 or it that are isomorphic to these 6. Okay. We move to some applications of our fundamental theorem of the finitely generated abelian group. This is the last part of uh, our session. It contains three theorems and uh, for, for the starting uh, uh, we move to uh, a definition. The definition is related to um, a decomposability. A group G is decomposable if it is isomorphic to direct to product of the two proper non-trivial subgroups. Any group G is isomorphic to direct products of the two of its proper non-trivial subgroups. Then such groups are called decomposable. Otherwise, G that group is indecomposable. For so for the decomposability, uh, uh, we show show by an exam. We mention an example here. Consider the group Z6. We all know. The elements of Z6 are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we can consider it some cyclic subgroups, cyclic subgroup generated by 2 as 0 to 4. And again, uh, it will be uh, 0 to 4, it will be cyclic subgroup. And the cyclic subgroup generated by 3 is 0 and 3. Uh, clearly, they are the subgroups of Z6. And we can say that we are taking its cross products and its cross products cyclic group generated by 2 cross cyclic group generated by 3 is isomorphic to z2 cross z3 and that is should be isomorphic to z6. 
so that we can written as uh, z6 is isomorphic to direct products of two of its subgroups come to the definition a group g is decomposable if it is isomorphic to direct products of two proper non-trivial subgroups see two and cyclic group generated by two and cyclic group generated by three are the proper non-trivial cyclic subgroups proper non-trivial subgroups and whose direct products is cyclic group generated by two and cyclic group generated by three is isomorphic to z6 that is why is isomorphic to group G is isomorphic to direct product of two proper non-trivial subgroups. So that we can say that Z6 is decomposable. Now think about Z8. It is clear that we are unable to write uh, uh, Z8 as direct products of any of its proper subgroups. See the subgroups of Z8 are 0, uh, 2, 4, 6, 0, 2, 4, 6, then again 0, 4, and that, that is the only subgroups, proper subgroup, non trivial subgroups. See uh, whose direct products will not be Z8. That is why we can say that Z8 is indecomposable in because it is not able to write as the direct products of its proper subgroups. Now, we move to another theorem. The theorem is <coughs> 11.15. As according to theorem 11.15, it says that the finite indecomposable abelian groups are exactly the cyclic groups with order power of a prime. Once, once more, it is a finite, indecomposable. Indecomposable means the group cannot be written as direct products of the two of its proper non-trivial subgroups. So, finite indecomposable abelian groups are exactly cyclic groups. We have to prove that are the cyclic groups with whose order should be a power of a prime. How we will prove? Firstly, we suppose that let G be a finite and indecomposable abelian group. G is finite group and indecomposable. Because it is finite and de indecomposable, that means G cannot, as we said, G cannot be written as the direct products of the two of its proper non-trivial subgroups. So, Simply we can say because it is abelian and finite and uh, indecomposable. This is very important. It is finite as well as indecomposable and it is abelian. Uh, we can uh, move to theorem 11.12. Well, the theorem 11.12 as we said earlier, it is the our fundamental theorem of the finitely generated abelian groups. Through that we can say that every finitely generated abelian group is iso to zp1 raised to r1 cross zp2 raised to r2 cross etc cross zp r raised uh, pn raised to rn cross z cross cross z cross z cross etc cross z. But the group is finite. We can cut the last part z cross z cross etc cross z. But simply we can say that that is isomorphic to direct product. Uh, product of the cyclic groups of the prime power order that means zp1 raised to r1 zp2 raised to r2 cross etc cross zpn raised to r but here we have given that finite indecomposable abelian groups g is indecomposable since g is indecomposable it cannot be written as the direct to products of the finite subgroups so, the direct products must consist of the just only one cyclic group, just only one cyclic groups. Uh, that cyclic groups whose order should be a power of a prime, order always a power of a prime number. 
That is why we can say that that should contains only some z p i raised to r i. So conversely, let p be a prime, uh, and we uh, we says that it can be written as only one factor. We have taken it as z p power r is indecomposable. If possible, we have taken if possible if z p power r were isomorphic to z p power i cross z p power j. Uh, we just suppose that z p power r is decomposable. So, if it is decomposable, that z p power r should be isomorphic to z p power i cross z p power j. What definitely i plus j is equal to the entire value r. Then every element would have order um, at most p power maximum of i j. See z p power i cross z uh, z p power j. Here we have the elements are the ordered pairs. The first element is of or maximum order p power i. And the second element is of maximum order p power j. And we know that every element of z p power i and uh, cross z p power j is of order LCM of order of first component uh, comma L, uh, sec, uh, order of the second component. That should not exceed the max p power maximum of i j. So that we can say that a very element of z p power i cross z p power j is at most p power maximum of i j. That should be less than p power r because i plus j is equal to r. That is why maximum of i j should be less than r. That is why p power maximum of i j should be less than p power r. So, it is evident that we are unable to write z p power r as isomorphic to z p power i cross z p power j where i plus j is equal to r. Because it cannot be none of the elements will be isomorphic to uh, none of the elements have order p power r. That is why it is not cyclic. That is why we can say that it, we, we are unable to return like that. That is why z if uh, the finite indecomposable group is abelian group that should be cyclic because it is of the form z p power r with the order power of a prime. That is because it is indecomposable it have only one factor that factor cannot be decomposed that is why that should be of the form z p power r or z p power r that should be cyclic group hence the proof. Now we will move to another theorem our theorem 1116. In this theorem 1116 says that a number if m divides the order of the finite abelian group g the number m divides order of the group G is finite and abelian. Then G has a subgroup of order M. So we have to prove that G has a subgroup of order M. We consider the theorem by theorem 11-12. The theorem 11-12 as we discussed it is the nothing. It is the fine fundamental theorem of the finitely generated abelian groups. We know that G is finite and abelian group. So, G can be isomorphic too. Because it is finite, the tail part Z cross, Z cross, etc. cross Z will not be there. That is why G, uh, G can be written as Z P 1 raised to R 1 cross, Z P 2 raised to R 2 cross, etc. cross Z P n raised to R n. Where not all P i's need not need be distinct. All PIs need not be distinct. Okay, and now we can come to since P1, the whose order is order of the group is 
P1 raised to R1 into P2 raised to R2 into etc. Pn raised to Rn is the order of Pg. Is the order of Zp1 raised to R1 cross, Zp2 raised to R2 cross, etc. Zpn raised to Rn. The, since G is isomorphic to this, definitely the order of G is P1 raised to R1, P2 raised to R2, etc. Pn raised to Rn. So, M must be of the form. So, M divides order of G. That is why M should divide P1 raised to R1, P2 raised to R2, etc. Pn raised to Rn. That is why M, uh, the fact M uh, divide this entire number, M can be the uh, M have a factor, uh, the factor of P1 raised to R1 is factor of M, the factor of P2 raised to R2 is factor of M and factor of Pn raised to Rn is also factor of M. That is why we can say that the factor of P1 raised to R1 as P1 raised to S1, where S1 should be less than R1. Or less than or equal to R1. P2 raised to S2, etc., order of uh, the factor of Pn raised to Rn as Pn raised to Sn. So, M should be of the form P1 raised to R uh, S1, P2 raised to X2, etc., Pn raised to Sn, where 0 less than or equal to Si less than or equal to Ri. So, that is why we can say that. The number Pi raised to Ri minus Si definitely Ri minus Si is greater than or equal to 0 but should be less than Ri. So, Pi raised to Ri generate a cyclic subgroup of Zpi raised to Ri of Zpi raised to Ri. Uh, we have taken a general component Zpi raised to Ri. So, Pi raised to Ri is uh, Ri minus Si is a number of, uh, which is less than since Ri minus Si should be less than or equal to Ri. We can say that the Pi raised to Ri minus Si is a number in Zpi raised to Ri. That is why that will generate a cyclic subgroup of Zpi raised to Ri of order equal to. We know that as we discussed in our UG classes or a early abstract algebra classes, we know that whose order should be, order of this element will be order of the entire group. The order of the entire group Zpi raised to Ri is Pi raised to Ri divided by GCD of order of the entire group that is Pi raised to Ri. And order of the uh, and the number the number is pi raised to ri minus si so that we can say that pi raised to ri minus si generates a cyclic subgroup of zpi raised to ri of order equal to the quotient of that is pi raised to ri by the gcd of pi raised to ri and pi raised to ri minus si that means pi raised to ri divided by gcd of Pi raised to Ri, Pi raised to Ri and Pi raised to Ri minus Si. But the GCD of Pi raised to Ri and Pi raised to Ri minus Si is because uh, this is a factor of Pi raised to Ri. So, that definitely GCD is Pi raised to Ri minus Si. Thus, Pi raised to Ri minus Si generates a cyclic subgroup of Zpi raised to Ri whose order should be Pi raised to Ri divided by GCD of Pi raised to Ri and Pi raised to Ri minus Si, which is the GCD is Pi raised to Ri minus Si. Therefore, Pi raised to Ri minus Si. Pi raised to Ri and Pi raised to Ri will cancel is there. Uh, the, the in the 1 by Pi raised to minus Si is there, that is Pi raised to Si is there. We are recalling that cyclic group generated by A is a denote the cyclic group generated by an element A. We see that P1 raised to R1 minus S1, P2 raised to R2 minus X2, etc. The cyclic group generated by Pn raised to Rn minus Sn. The cyclic group generated by P1 raised to R1 minus S1, 
cross cyclic group generated by P2 raised to R2 minus X2 cross etc cross cyclic group generated by Pn raised to Rn minus Sn which is the required value of N of uh, required subgroup of order M because uh, M the value of M is as we discussed here M must be of the form P1 raised to S1, P2 raised to etc, Pn raised to Sa. So, there should be a cyclic group which is generated by P1 raised to R1 minus S1 cross, P2 raised to R2 minus S2 cross etc, Pn minus Rn minus Sn. Cyclic group generated by P1 raised to R1 minus S1 is of order P1 raised to S1. Cyclic group generated by P2 raised to R2 minus S2 is of order P2 raised to S2, etc. Cyclic group generated by Pn raised to Rn minus Sn is of order Pn raised to Sn. So that whose product then whose product is whose product is P1 raised to S1, P2 raised to X2, etc. Pn raised to Sn. That means the value of M. So that we can say that this subgroup is the required subgroup of order M. So come to our statement if M divides order of finite abelian group then G has a subgroup of order M. We proved that there should be a subgroup is a cyclic subgroup it is a direct product of the cyclic subgroups is of order M. Now, we move to the another theorem, the theorem uh, 1117. If m is the square free integer, that is m is not divisible by square of any prime number, then every abelian group of order m is cyclic. m is square free, that means m is not divisible by square of any prime number, then every abelian group of order m is cyclic. So, let us we move to our proof. Let g be abelian group of square free order m. Then by theorem 11.2. So, our famous fundamental theorem of finitely generated abelian group because it is finite the tail z cross z cross etc. Z, uh, z is not there g is isomorphic to z p 1 raised to r 1 cross z p 2 raised to r 2 etc z p n raised to r n is there where m is equal to the order of g is m is the order of g that means p 1 raised to r 1 into p 2 raised to r 2 into etc p, uh, p n raised to r n is there since m is square free m is square free that means none of the uh, <coughs> m is divisible by square of any prime number. So, uh, we can say that uh, P1 the raise to R1 m is no, not divisible by square of any prime. If R1 is equal to 2 or 3 the P1 whose square divides m it is not possible. So, the only possibility of R1 is equal to 1 similarly R2 equal to 1 etc Rn is equal to 1. So that since m is square free, we must have all r i's r is equal to 1 and all p i's are the distinct primes because if any of the p i's are not distinct if p 1 and p 2 are same definitely if r 1 are, even if r 1 and r 2 is equal to 1 a, a square of a prime divides here it is not possible that is why definitely all p i's are the distinct primes. By corollary 11.6 uh, that we discussed in our lecture 1, by that we can say that G is isomorphic to Z P 1 P 2 etc P n. So, that we can say that G is cyclic. So, come to our theorem M is square free integer. M is not divisible by square of any prime number. Then every abelian group of order M is cyclic group, cyclic. Such group of order M where m is square free 
then we can say that it is cyclic by corollary 11 6 we can say that this is cyclic that is now i am providing some assignments to you that you can do uh, list elements of z2 cross z4 find order of the each of the elements and check whether is this group is cyclic similarly in case of z3 cross z4 find order of each of its elements. repeat exercise one means find order of each of the elements and check whether is this group z3 cross z4 is cyclic in next exercise 3 to 7 find order of the given elements of the director products so 2 6 is an element of uh, z4 cross z12 find the order of 2 6 in z4 cross z12 we know that order of uh, LCM of the order of 2 in Z4 and order of 6 in Z12. So that's uh, on that way you can find out the order. Similarly, you may find out order of 2, 3 in Z6 cross Z15. And uh, order of the find the order of the LM810 uh, in Z12 cross Z18. And find the order of uh, 3, 10, 9 in Z4 cross Z12 cross Z15. And also find the order of 3, 6, 12, and 16 in Z4 cross Z12 cross Z20 cross Z24. Now, uh, just I move to assignment 2. What is the largest order among the order of all cyclic subgroups of Z6 cross Z8 of the and of Z12 cross Z15? What is the largest order? among all or uh, among the order of all cyclic subgroups find out all the cyclic subgroup among the all uh, uh, that cyclic subgroup which is the largest order subgroups and which is what uh, what is the largest order find proper non trivial subgroups of z2 cross z2 and find all proper non trivial subgroups of z2 cross z2 cross z2 and find all subgroups of Z2 cross Z2 of order 4. Find all subgroups of Z2 cross Z2 cross Z4. And the isomorphic to Klein's for group. Check whether is it isomorphic to Klein's for group. I think uh, whose order Klein's for group is of order 4. But definitely this is of order. Uh, we can say that it is uh, 2 into 2 into 4. 4, 4 and 4, 16 elements, which is not isomorphic to Klein's for group. But there is a among these groups, I, I, uh, there is one group which is isomorphic to Klein's for group. Find which is that. Okay. I am providing some reference books. We followed for this lecture a first course in abstract algebra, 7th edition by John B. Frally. And we referred the topics in algebra second edition by I. N. Hernstein and contemporary abstract algebra whose eighth edition by Joseph A. Gallion. You can refer these books for your further references. And these three books are very nice books of the algebra of uh, abstract algebra. Okay, thank you, thank you all.